Winter is just around the corner, so in this video I'm going to be showing you everything that I wear on the Scottish mountains during winter. So let's get stuck right in. So to kick off the video, what we'll do is we'll start on hats and gloves first. So as you can see already, I have my North Face beanie hat on. This is their classic Bones beanie hat and it's my absolute favourite out of all the beanie hats I've tried over the years. I always just seem to go back to these ones. As well as this one, I also carry some spares in my rucksack. I usually have this one with me, which I wear in the tent. This is my Sherpa Adventure hat. Can't remember the exact model though. I think it's discontinued. I've also got this one here. This is the Low Alpine Mountain Cap. And I very rarely wear this, and I'll tell you why. It's just too hot. So I carry this in my rucksack as an emergency if for some reason I had to stop for a prolonged period of time. So as well as carrying two spare hats, I also carry this, it's the Polar Buff, which essentially is like a regular buff, but the bottom portion of it is made of this fleecy pore tech material. So if there was an emergency, you could have on the low alpine hat, Luna, stop chasing your tail, with this, protect your neck and then have that over your face to give you total ultimate protection. Moving on to gloves now. My first pair I have are these. These are a cheap pair of head gloves that I picked up from Costco. And they work with a touch screen and they've got a nice rubberized palm as well. I usually wear these at the beginning of the walk just to keep the chill off but I don't want anything too severe glove wise. If it gets a little bit colder still, I've got the Montane Prism gloves as well and these are an absolute state. I need to get a new one of these because I'll show you in a minute. You'll see there, there's a hole in my thumb. But these are fantastic gloves. Hiya, stop it. <laughs> Excuse the dog there. Come on, get down. I'll put you in your crate. Do you want to go in your crate? Yeah, so the Montane Prism gloves, the weigh absolutely nothing. I think they're about 80 grams from memory. And they fit in this little bag here. What I'll do is I'll just stuff these in. And there you go. Not much bigger than a kiwi. I also carry a pair of Rab mitts. And these are very similar to the Montane Prism gloves. They're just the Rab version. And you can get these in glove form as well. But these are just in case I've stopped and want to keep my hands warm. And I love these as well. There you go. And very similar to the Montane Prism gloves. These come in their own little stuff sack as well. And pack up to about the size of a kiwi. So I have one more pair of gloves that would be in my rucksack. And that is these big bad boys. These are extremity gloves. And again, they've got the poor tech lining. And I rarely use these, but these are again if it just gets really cold and I need something a bit more substantial. There you go. Again, these just sit in the rucksack in case of emergency or, like I just said, it's really cold. So that's hats and gloves. Let's move on to base layers. And I'm going to put this little one through the living room because she's doing my nothing. Come on you, get through. Moving on to base layers now and this is my main base layer to date. I've had this for years, it is the Rab Miko long sleeved zipped t-shirt. Basically this is a hybrid t-shirt because I think it's 67% merino and around 33% polyester. So you get the best of both in this because you get a nice warm merino wool but the polyester qualities in it helps it keep its shape much longer because I find merino wool tops do tend to wear out. New for this year, I've not worn this yet, this is my Rab, oh, hold on, I'll check the my notes, the Rab Nexus Pull-On and this is again another winter base layer. I'm looking forward to trying this, you can see inside there it's got like a sort of fleeced panel, panelling for helping for the warmth there so yeah, I'll be interested to see how I get on with that. So you may have heard of people talking about the layering system which is really quite important. Basically you can wear up to four layers during winter and the idea is if you're too hot you would lose a couple of layers or if you're too cold you'd obviously add a couple of layers and this helps you regulate your temperature 
keep yourself dry and warm. So we've already touched on base layers, now we'll then move on to the mid layers. So the first mid layer I've got to show you today is the Rab Geon fleece. This is it here. And this is aimed probably for winter use. If you can see there, it has got some sort of fleecy panelling inside. Nice warm cosy fleece this, I do like it. If it's really cold, I would opt to take this with me. Unfortunately, Rab have discontinued these, which is a shame because they're excellent. This is their Strata hoodie, and it's made with Alpha Polar Tech, which came out about 10 years ago. Fantastic technology. The, the premise is it keeps you warm whilst you're moving, and it really is quite breathable. Um, the downside to that is the wind can cut through them a little bit more, but generally I tend to find these things are really warm and bomb-proof. I'll zip it open for you. There you go. It's a shame they don't make these anymore. I will find something that's very similar. You can see it's got a built-in hood. I've had this for years. I won't get rid of it until it falls to bits, which might be soon because you can see it's pretty badly bobbled there. But yeah, that is my main two mid layers that I use. So typically your third or your fourth layer is your waterproof shell. This is my one here. Again, new this year. This is the Mountain Equipment Firefox jacket. It's not a full-on winter jacket, this, but it will do the job, particularly with that layering system. If I've checked the forecast and I know it's going to be absolute howling, peeing down with rain, windy, and it's going to be one of these days your waterproofs are going to be on all day, I wouldn't bother with the Strata hoodie or the Mountain Equipment jacket. I'd move straight over to my Paramo jacket, which is this here. This is new for this year, which was kindly sent to me by Paramo for review. These are absolutely fantastic jackets. I just find them too warm for most times of the year, but in wet and windy conditions, these come into their own. You can wear them in dry conditions as well, obviously, but I'd, be, I'd probably revert back to the, the, the system I just showed you previously with the Strata hoodie and just carrying a waterproof jacket in my rucksack. With this, I'd have this on all day. It would keep me warm and dry. These are fantastic. For my waterproof trousers, I have the uh, Bergos Packlight Gore-Tex trousers. These have seen better days. I'm going to replace these very soon. And strictly speaking, they're probably not winter trousers either, but they keep me dry and they do a job. And they've got venting all the way down the side there as well. So I do like the Bergos Packlight waterproof trousers. Whatever you call them, you might need to upgrade your pants or trousers for winter use because your free season ones will probably not quite cut it, particularly when it's windy and cold. So for me, I have gone for the Montaigne Terra pants. These are the Firma Stretch winter version. I think they've replaced these with something very similar because I've had these well over 10 years now. But you can see here, they're thicker than usual but they do have venting right down the sides of your leg from just below your hip down. So you can regulate your temperature quite easily with these. And if you had your waterproofs on, hopefully with leg venting down the side as well, then you can get a wee bit of airflow in there. So although you might be happy you've got your layering system set up, you've got four layers that keep you really warm. If you have to stop for any reason, will it be stopping for lunch, checking on the map where you are, or even an emergency where you have to wait to be rescued, it's so important to have an insulated jacket tucked away in your rucksack just in case you start to feel the cold. So I've got two jackets, I don't carry both of them, it depends how cold it's going to be. If the temperatures are looking around about freezing or just below freezing, I tend to go with this. This is my Mountain Equipment Superflux. It is synthetic, so you don't have to worry so much about it getting wet, it will keep you warm still. Um, for the really, really cold winter days, I've got this bomber jacket. It is an absolute beast. This is the Mountain Equipment, I think it's a K7 series. Again, I've had this a good few years and rarely use it, but I know I've got it for those rare, really cold winter days. It's so cosy, this. it's really good. Um, like I said, the temperatures have to be really below the mercury for me to decide to pack this. Um, the last time I took it, I think the wind chill was well below minus 10 and I didn't feel a thing. If you're going to be loafing around a summit, 
doing photography during winter you might want to consider something a bit more substantial and bigger like this as well just to keep you warm last but not least is obviously footwear and we'll start on the socks so in winter I always wear a sock liner and my choice is usually these guys and that is the Bridgedale Cool Max liners also wear them when I'm camping as a base layer to keep my feet warm on top of the, um, the sock liners I also wear the Smart Wool mountaineering sock and I think that is their thickest in the range and they're nice and padded in the right places the toes and the heels and they keep my feet warm as well although I've noticed the heels are starting to go so I'm going to have to get a new pair for this year I think but yeah they're excellent socks to pair up with your sock liners boots wise I have these here these are the Mammut monolith boot you can see there they've got a solid stiff sole as you'd expect with a winter boot and I think these I want to say B2 rated and they take a C1 crampon I hope I've got that right way round and my crampons of choice are these bad boys here these are the black diamond 12 point Sirac I think they're called and they've got the anti balling plates here which helps stop snow building up and here's one I made earlier all attached to the boot so you can see them there these are fantastic crampons they do for trekking and mountaineering so they are actually probably a little bit over engineered for me so if I'm not doing anything too technical I tend to just wear my three season boots and this is a controversial one some people might be against me giving this advice so if you're just starting out you should go for this sort of setup first and as you get more experienced you then might want to get yourself a walking crampon like these Catula ones which fit on trainers and shoes I almost forgot folks, you also want to get a good pair of ski goggles for eye protection from spin drift, that's when you get the dry powdery snow getting blown around from strong winds, hailstones etc, good eye protection don't have to be overly expensive, these are the sundown ones um, make sure they've got the double screen and they've got ventilation because they can steam up as well and last but least, get yourself a decent pair of sunnies for when you don't need the goggles these just protect your eyes from the sun obviously but the sun obviously reflection can bounce off the snow and it gives you crippling headaches so make sure you get a pair of sunnies as well back to the main video to wrap up the video I've got one last item to show you super important obviously it's the ice axe what to do is get yourself down to your local outdoor shop they will help you measure up but basically what they'll do is they'll get you to hold the axe down the side of your leg and the bottom of the spike should just be above your ankle and that should be roughly right for your height this is it was either a 55 or a 60 centimeter axe and i'm five foot ten everybody's slightly different but that just gives you a general idea but it's super important get yourself an axe in the event you need to arrest your fall or if you just want a bit of extra security on a steep snow bank they're worth their weight in gold these guys and uh, this one here is the um, Climbing Technologies Alpin Tour and you can see there it's got a slight curve in the shaft and that basically means it's a mountaineering axe walking axes tend to just have a straight shaft but uh, these will do and they're handy if you do tread into more sort of technical terrain so yeah that is pretty much everything Obviously, get a good head torch as well. Uh, you really need one of them. You can get benighted so easily, even in autumn. Clocks go back this weekend, in fact. So yeah, remember, get a head torch as well. But otherwise, that is all I've got time for. I hope you found that useful. Please leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.